Greetings everyone and welcome back to the channel for another 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review. And today's quite a special day here at GoFigure. Uh, we have a new figure that's just landed, it only arrived yesterday. Uh, a figure that I've been after a while. Um, there are a few iterations of this figure out there. It's actually uh, Nathan Algren from the uh, 2003 Edswick film, The Last Samurai, uh, as portrayed by, by Mr. Tom Cruise. Uh, now, there's, as I said, there's been some uh, versions of this figure out, most probably notably the Pop Toys version and the Pan Gaia Pangea Toys version. Forgive me if I'm butchering names today, by the way. Um, I apologise beforehand. Uh, I held back on those uh, because of the rooted hair. Uh, both, Billy, both of those have rooted hair. Now, I'm not averse to rooted hair, but I'm not the biggest fan at the same time. Um, I'm most certainly, I'm not a huge fan of, uh, of figures with rooted hair where you need to spend at least three years doing an apprenticeship in a barber shop before it looks even presentable on a shelf. Um, I'm, I'm more inclined towards the sculpted hair myself. So I, I, I hung on uh, and uh, as always, my good friend William Wang uh, came across this figure and provided it for me. As always, link to his Facebook page down below. Uh, and as I have to say, um, straight out of the box, out of the shipper box. Um, uh, I was, uh, my jaw did hit the floor at, just at the quality of the box itself. You know me, uh, if you've seen any of my previous videos, I do love my art boxes. And this really, this box is uh, in a class of its own. It, it raises the bar, shall we say. Uh, perhaps the difference between buying a, an old Nokia phone and then buying an iPhone and looking at the packages they come in. Uh, this is simply stunning. Um, but what we'll do as always, we'll have a quick look at the box, we'll uh, dive down to the table, look at the accessories, uh, then we'll bring the figure out, get him on the turntable, take a close-up look, and then it'll be over to the Detolf, as always, under the Detolf lights, in a pose, and see how, how the figure displays. Uh, this figure is actually produced by, and once again, forgive the name butchering, I believe it's pronounced Jayoan. Studio and Virus Studio. So it's, I believe it's a collaboration between the two of them. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's, uh, without further ado, take a look at this box. And as I say, it's not it's not uh, ridiculously tall or ridiculously wide, but it is quite deep, as you can see. Uh, and uh, it's uh, sort of held together by this band, which I will attempt to take off on camera. It's rather nice. Uh, it's rather nice collar. And. Let's get that off, have a quick look at that. Yeah, it's just simple card, uh, simple black card, uh, but with a lovely lettering lettering work on there, saying The Last Samurai and the name of the studio there in gold, catches the light beautifully, so we'll put that to one side. Uh, let's bring this box forward a little bit. Uh, so what have we got? Yeah, so in red up the top here, The Last Samurai, uh, there's a sort of outline of uh, Nathan himself, Tom Cruise. You just visible are his eyes in in there. But the quality of the box, the card that here is really thick, really solid. This is magnetically clamped. This front cover, and I'll see if I can get that to. Uh, as you can see, this actually comes out and around and spells out. Well, to give that full diorama, this this actually could be used for a display if you wanted to. Um, not, I'm pretty certain it'll fit in the Detolf, but that is quite spectacular. And just the quality of this, you've got the C in the background, all in red. Um, it says the, uh, uh, it says actually says Captain Nathan Orgren in gold up there. Uh, you've got the Last Samurai, a beautiful little quote from the film about the formation of the Japanese islands uh, and the dipping of the hot samurai sword in the sea. Uh, once again, studio name there, studio name there. Let's just close this up so we can spin it round. Yeah, so you can take a look at uh, the rest of it. Obviously, the, uh, we've just seen these sides, but let's have a look at the back. Oh, and that's upside down. Let's just flip that over so you can see that. Very clumsily done on camera there. But yeah, very plain back. It's just plain red with the last samurai in red and the studio name at the bottom again. Yeah. Incredibly simple, incredibly effective, and very, very classy, I have to say. And very heavy as well. But there you have it, that's the box. So, next step, next step as always, is down on the table. Let's take a look at the accessories and uh, find out what uh, what comes with this, uh, this Nathan Algren figure. So, uh, down to the table. 
Okay, so here we are down on the table with all the accessories that come with the Nathan Orgram figure. Uh, and there's a lot of them. Um, so I'll try and keep this as brief as possible. Just before we start though, I have to say that the quality of the packaging, and I know I'm banging on about this, but it is worth it, is continued inside as well. All these items are individually wrapped. They're not just shoved into the, uh, into the foam. Uh, as you normally find with one six scale figures, all these are individually wrapped, uh, either in plastic bags or, or by other means uh, to, uh, and it, it just smacks of quality. But uh, that, that's enough of the packaging and me uh, gushing about the packaging. What do you get? Well, uh, let's start with this. I am not gonna attempt to unfurl this uh, on camera, although I might use it as a backdrop. This is actually, you can't probably can't see this because yeah, I don't have the right, uh, but this is a rather, rather wonderful poster. Uh, now, it's not what you would think maybe a, a poster of a promotional shot from the film. This is actually an, an original piece of artwork done in black and white. Uh, with the code of the Bushido, the, the way of the warrior, the samurai warrior across the top, and a, 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 a hyper Japanese stylized picture of uh, Tom Cruise as the last samurai. Um, if I get the opportunity, maybe uh, when we go over to the detail, I'll give you a, a view of this, but very, very nice. You most certainly could frame this. Uh, it's a lovely piece of work. Uh, but yeah, I will attempt to show that at some point during this review. What else do you get? Okay, uh, let's start with the hands. Uh, as always, you know me and my hands, a huge hand fan, uh, and there are a set on the figure already. Uh, so that's one pair, two, three, four pairs. Um, two ungloved, one, uh, uh, one gloved. Let's take a look at the gloved hands first. Let's get close on these. Uh, yeah, very nice. Nice paintwork there. Uh, yeah, the creases in the gloves. Let's try and get a bit closer there. Let's improve this light a little bit. Yeah, let's see if we can get some more light on those. Yeah, uh, very nice. They are a hard plastic. Oh, there's a bit of give in them. Um, not not super flexible, but there is some give there. Uh, not perhaps the most flexible hands, but uh, yeah, that's the gloved hands. Let's take a look at the ungloved ones and see what kind of paintwork we're looking at here. Yeah. Pretty nice, uh, up to Hot Toys standards, and that seems to be the yardstick I measure hands by these days. Uh, perhaps not, but uh, pretty good anyway. There's a there's several paint applications there. There's some rending on the knuckles. You can see the, uh, if I hold that up there, you can see that there's vein work, there's bone work there. It's the same story regarding the flexibility. Um, yeah, there's some give there, so you can work with these. Uh, but we'll uh, we'll see how they perform when we actually uh, get him in a pose and under the detail uh, light. So, yep, that's your hands. Uh, what else have we got? There's a lot of it. Um, let's start with this box. Now, this box with the Japanese symbol on the front, all wood. Uh, now, I'm not sure whether this is uh, this is designed to store uh, your accessories in. Maybe it is. Uh, maybe it's something you can use in the display. Um, Inside this box were these bits and pieces, which we'll come to shortly. But yeah, very, very nice. It's uh, it's not a particularly heavy wood, but it's very solid, well built, and looks very effective. So yeah, use it in the display, use it to store your accessories, uh, whichever you choose to do. Uh, I will cover these actually that were inside the box because I'll be perfectly honest with you, I am not 100% sure what all this stuff is. I'm not going to unravel it all until I've taken some, uh, take a look at some of the photos, uh, maybe uh, uh, on the net there, of uh, of what these are actually for. As I say, this is a brand new figure to me, and this is the first time out of the box. It looks like there's a gold chain in there. There's some string, which has just fallen down. Uh, there's some blue string, which uh, may very well have something to do with this piece. It may not. Uh, looks like there's a red sash in there as well. There's lots going on there, but I'm, uh, yeah. Uh, prior to uh, posing him up and getting him in the detail, I'll do a, a quick bit of research before we uh, before we get to the detail and uh, see what all these pieces are about. Um, let's take a look at the weapons. Now, these really are something special. They are. These are all metal. Uh, the heft you get from, uh, as soon as you pick these up, uh, you, you know you're dealing with quality here. Uh, all metal. Uh, well, let me just take that sword out, and we'll come to that in a second. This sheath is all metal. Yeah, and there's no there's no plastic on here. 
The paintwork is really high gloss, beautiful paintwork there. The detailing, not sure whether the camera's picking this up, is exceptional. Uh, really, really, really nice. I think I've got a lot of 1.6 scale swords in my collection. Um, the one I bang on about probably more than anything is the Highlander Broadsword, but these are up there with some, if not the best, 1.6 scale swords I have ever come across. They are very, very good quality. Now let's take a look at the actual blade itself. Now look at that. Once again, all metal. Yeah, uh, the it's just it's just fantastic, fantastic work. If you look at the hilt here uh, and the the bindings on the hilt, yeah, uh, although th these are plastic. Um, uh, they look so authentic. Let's see if I can't get that up in the camera there. Yeah, you've got the hilt there, the guard. Yeah, the guard, once again, that's plastic, but the blade is all metal. Yeah, and as I said, the sheath is all metal. So uh, if I can get this back in here on camera, it would be nothing short of a miracle. Let's see if I can do it, yeah. There you go. Uh, and there's two of these. Let's take a look at this, uh, at, the, at the longer sword as well. Yeah. Um, once again, it's the same story here. Yeah. Uh, all metal sheath, um, plastic hilt. Uh, and I believe this actually, the, the end here is actually metal. I could be wrong. I think that this may very well be plastic over metal. Uh, the, 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 the guard here is plastic as well, but let's just, this is the first time these swords have been out. So yeah, there you go again. Uh, I would imagine these are quite, sh yeah, they are, they're quite sharp. Uh, so, ah, now I haven't spotted this and there's some lovely engraving there at the bottom of the blade. Uh, yeah, simply excellent work. And some nice detailing here on the uh, the straps as well, the gold there. Yeah, just, uh, just stunning, just stunning weaponry. Uh, that is fantastic work. So I'll put these to one side enough gushing about the weaponry what else do we get um let's take a look at this uh now i am assuming once again i'm gonna have to check uh prior to prior to getting him into the detail i believe this is for the helmet uh the helmet sits on there we'll come to the helmet in a second uh but yeah once again this is wooden it's all wood, very nice to put together. It's quite light, yeah. It's been, uh, looks like it's been, had a coat of gloss paint on there. Uh, yeah, and I'm assuming this is for this piece over here. But as I say, we'll come to that. We also get another wooden piece. This is the sword stand itself, yeah. Solid wood, there's a bit of weight to this one. Not quite as light to wood as this. I'm assuming it's because it's gonna be holding up those metal swords. Uh, yeah, solid wood. Well, so we've got three pieces glued together. There's a little bit of visible glue here, which is a bit ugly, um, but uh, not a deal breaker. Yeah, but uh, your sword rack there uh, for display purposes. Excellent. Uh, what else have we got? This is a piece of the armor, obviously. Uh, now, from the get-go, all this armor is metal. Um, and I, uh, I'm amazed at the detailing and the quality of the construction here, but yeah, everything is metal. I'm going to bring this right up. In fact, I'm going to see if I can't improve the light a little bit here. Let's see if I can't get some more light on this. Um, uh, not sure if the camera's picking up that fantastic paintwork to give it that slightly weathered look. Uh, there's that, that deep red color, uh, with the black, it's just the black flex in there, I'm assuming. Let's have a look underneath of what's holding that together. I don't want to be too rough with this, uh, but yeah, it looks like it's it's material holding it together. Yeah, it is, I think. But yeah, uh, fantastic detailing. There's even subtle weathering on there and the paint applications are superb. We'll come down to the coloring of this figure uh, a little later on when we get the actual figure out itself. But uh, yeah, that's the quality of the armor that we're looking at. Let's take a look at this head as well. Now, this is exceptionally heavy because this is all metal. Uh, and we have a head sculpt already in there. Now, whether you are, uh, well, well, there are no instructions with this, by the way. That's the one, uh, one thing that I was probably a little put out by, uh, the fact that there are, are no instructions, whether you're expected to use this head sculpt when you attach this if you want to display it that way 
um, is a bit of a mystery to me, or whether you take this one off and actually put it on to the, uh, the, the Tom Cruise head sculpt. But we'll get to that. Uh, I will do a little research in between scenes. Uh, but yeah, once again, all metal. The detailing is superb. The, the, the heft to it is quite phenomenal. You've got the, uh, these blue strings, which, uh, which go under, over, and around, and then hang down at the back. Um, yeah, the paintwork on here, as you can see, yeah, the detailing on these pieces on the side here, the, uh, the engraving at the top there, this is absolutely amazing work. It really, really is. This has got the same flex because of the, uh, uh, of the material holding it up. Yeah, this is just simply wonderful. A wonderful piece. The, the paintwork on the, the intricacy of the paintwork inside here, and the high gloss finish uh, on, on the mask underneath are, are superb. And probably a good idea to bring in this piece at this point. I'm going to attempt to do this on camera. Uh, this comes separately, this piece. Uh, once again, all metal. Uh, now, this is going to attach here. Uh, and as I say, I'm going to be brave here, so bear with me uh, while I attempt to do this on camera. Uh, I believe he said with confidence that it actually slots. Right, it's not going to cooperate, so I'm going to do this off camera. Bear with me. Talk amongst yourselves. Not the easiest thing. But I think we've got it. Yep, there we go. Yep. So it slots in. There are two notches underneath and then there are two little protruding pieces on this and it just simply slots down. Uh, and uh, that might not be all the way on, but it gives you a general idea. Once again, all metal, some lovely detailing on there, on that helmet. Yeah, so let's put that to one side carefully uh that's the uh, that's the helmet let's rest that over there what else have we got uh i think that's it yeah i think we've covered everything there uh so um on to the main event the man himself let's get the uh the nathan orgram figure out the tom cruise figure out get him on the turntable and have an up close and personal uh at the last samurai okay so here he is nathan orgram out of the box no accessories just straight onto the turntable I've tried to do some uh, fiddling around with the light here to get the best possible light, but I still think we won't fully appreciate this figure until we get it under the detail lights. First impressions, well, heavy, very, very heavy. Uh, all this metal, uh, all this armor rather is metal. Um, the first, first things that struck me, the weight, uh, the incredible attention to detail and the complexity of this armor uh, is simply stunning. Uh, I've not had the uh, the pleasure of, uh, of seeing the Pop Toys version or the Pangea, I believe it's called, version. Um, so I've got really nothing to compare it to. Uh, but for me, this is an absolutely amazing piece of work. Uh, as I say, I've got him on a, a, a generic stand because uh, he didn't actually come with a stand, which suits me fine. Uh, because, as you know, I love my custom bases and I will be displaying him on one of those. Uh, but, yeah... Where to begin with this with this outfit? The amount of detail and work that has gone into this is simply astronomical, it is. But yeah, let's start at the bottom and work our way up. Um, it, uh, the feet here, pegged feet, as you can probably see, uh, and then string bindings, um, quite authentic string bindings, and then these black slippers underneath. Uh, then we move up. In actual fact, I think I will probably stop him spinning at this point. Uh, so we can uh, just bear with me. Let's hope he doesn't do that speed up thing. No, let's start at the back. That was well placed. Let's bring him forward a little bit so we can get close on this armour. As I say, lighting's not ideal here. Let's see if I can't introduce a bit more to... Uh, yeah, that's a little bit better for the... Yeah, now these... Uh, the, the legs here, once again, there's all material underneath. All these bindings are real material. Let's spin it round ever so slowly, yeah. These bits at the front here are metal with these intricate designs. The paintwork is phenomenal. Spin it round a little more. You know, once again, tied with material at the front. Then we've got this material padding underneath, uh, which is... As I say, it is all material. Let's just see if we can't get even closer to that. 
So you can pick out those colors in there. The, the, then there's pants underneath here with a pattern on them, a speckled pattern. These are cotton underneath there. Uh, then we come to these pieces. Once again, these are metal inlaid into, into the material itself. All these, these armor pieces are like the helmet. They're all, uh, they're all metal, all held together with material, all beautifully crafted and painted. Uh, I don't know if the camera's picking up the golds in here, the reds underneath, uh, what looks like gold chain on top of the uh, metal pieces of armor. Uh, I mean, actually, if I lift this, you can see just the attention to detail underneath here. Is, is phenomenal with the patterns on the materials. The stitching is 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 absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm just it's going to be a gush fest. This so I warn everybody now. Uh, yeah, let's let's bring it around again. That that armor is continued all the way around. And the, the the detailing on here. This is the second uh, uh, sort of not the second, but the uh, the the other pair of hands that we didn't cover in the accessories. These are the armored hands, and and that attention to detail is continued through there. Even the. Uh, the armor on here is uh, is metal as well. All this armor is metal, basically. Let's just uh, put that to bed for uh, right now. Uh, the, let's uh, let's just move him out again, so you can see the detailing on the back here once again. The, the intricate detailing, uh, even across the top here, is just is just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I'm going to be super careful. I'm going to have to be super careful posing this one. I think I'd recommend anyone else to do the same. There are material ties here for the armor underneath, a red material sash. Uh, yeah, simply incredible. The intricacy of this um, of this gold chain that appears to, I don't know whether it's been glued on or how that's attached. I, I would suspect it's been glued uh, on there. It's just, just amazing. It really, really is. Let's bring him round again. Uh, I'm not going to bang on about this too much about and, and, and look and, and look at this outfit and this armor uh, in, in ridiculous detail simply because it speaks for itself. It does. Uh, you can see the work that the, that's gone into it. The money's right there in front of you. It really, really is. I suppose the only uh, criticism I might have um, is the color, and I know there's been some debate about this color. Having seen the uh, the Pop Toys and the Pangea version of this. Um, this armor, and having watched the film on multiple occasions and gone back to it again prior to getting this figure, I think the color might be slightly off. It might be too deep a red. My memory of it is is being a bit more vibrant. Um, I have read somewhere on the internet that somebody said that you can actually get this to uh, uh, to, to be a little bit more screen accurate and, and, and brighten that red up by, I think it was alcohol he suggested, rubbing onto this metal, but I ain't gonna risk that. Yeah, I will. Uh, I will live with that color being slightly less than one hundred percent screen accurate. <clears throat> Excuse me, just for the just for the pure sheer quality uh, and the work that's gone into this figure. Uh, let's just raise this camera a little bit, and so we can have a look at that head sculpt. As always, we're going to be under the detail of lights, and you always get a better impression under the detail of lights of how uh, uh, of the quality of this head sculpt. Let's just take these lights off for a second that I've got on the sides here because sometimes they can interfere with that head sculpt now. Let's bring him forward a bit. Personally, I think that is an excellent head sculpt. I really do. Um, the, the paint applications on there are wonderful. Beautiful glassy eyes. Is that a likeness of Tom Cruise in The Last Samurai? 100%. Uh, I think it's a fantastic head sculpt. They've even got some wet gloss look in these wonderfully sculpted hair strands as well. Uh, the skin texturing, fantastic. The uh, the, the five o'clock shadow, uh, moustache, the, well, it's just, it's absolutely spot on. Uh, it really, really is from every angle. That head sculpt works for me. Uh, phenomenal work, absolutely phenomenal work, really is. It's very rare that, uh, that that a figure actually exceeds my expectations. I think most recently, the Tecmo Terminator by Hot Toys, that most certainly did. This one is in the same category as that, uh, an, an expectation exceeder, yeah. Um, I'm not sure how many points of articulation there are. I am not gonna be getting super brutal with this and putting it in action poses and so on. I'm gonna keep it fairly neutral simply because I suspect this armor 
would like to be treated with uh, the due reverence it deserves. But yeah, I mean, if and I, and once again, I'm going on about the detailing, but it, it, it actually just everywhere you look on this figure, the attention to detail is phenomenal. I've just caught, what's just caught my eye are these shoulders. The work on these shoulders is just superb. Let's see if we can't get this camera a little bit higher so you can see that. Yeah, I think all this, uh, all this will really, really pop when it goes into the detail, which I think we should do now, really. So there you have him. Yeah, that's Nathan Algren. Tom Cruise, The Last Samurai. So without further ado, let's, I was gonna say get him in a pose, but I think I'm gonna keep it relatively neutral, but let's uh, let's get him over into the detolf, under the detolf lights and see how this, this wonderful piece displays. Okay, so here we are over at the detolf with the Jai Yuan Studio and Virus Studio, Nathan Algren from The Last Samurai. Before the gush fest ensues, uh, just a couple of things to note with this figure. Um, I decided I wanted to take the helmet off, as you can see, to display it over here. Uh, and rest assured, there is a, a Tom Cruise head sculpt underneath that. Um, it, it's been shaved down in places, so it obviously it'll fit the helmet. And part of me is wishing I didn't take it off because <laughs> the string work that goes underneath the, uh, underneath the neck and around the back and over the top is so complex. Um, call me stupid, but I would have preferred a set of instructions. One downside. Uh, what else uh, would I consider to be a downside? Um, I'm struggling. Struggling for other things. I would say be very, very careful with this, uh, this, this outfit. If you're thinking of picking this figure up, that intricate gold uh, chain that's overlaid uh, is very delicate. So be exceptionally careful. Um, other downsides I am struggling with. Um, that, that little bag of accessories that I mentioned, there's all kinds of things in there. There's a sash, there's some copper wire, there are bits of replacement cord for the armor, all kinds of things. Um, so pretty much have to improvise because there's no instructions there. So probably they're the two downsides, uh, but then, you know, you're gonna expect uh, complexity with a figure like this, simply because of the intricacy of the armor. Uh, but yeah. Let's take a step back and have a look. Normally at this point, I bang on about shelf presence. No point for that uh, at this point in time. That sort of speaks for itself. I've got it on the um, the usual Thanos uh, Endgame Hot Toys uh, stand, which, uh, I, as I mentioned before, I have a few of simply because they're so versatile. So let's, uh, let's have a, a closer look at how he displays. And yeah, it pretty much speaks for itself. Uh, that armor is absolutely amazing. Incredibly intricate, a little bit delicate. Uh, be very careful how you work with it, but uh, I've got him in a relatively neutral pose here, just holding one of the swords, because I wanted to display the other sword on the stand there. Uh, but uh, yeah, I would say be careful when posing, but yeah, just look at the detailing on this armor under these lights. It absolutely pops, it really, really does. Um, I'm not going to go into any great detail because the pictures speak for themselves. Yeah, uh, the metal work, the, uh, the, the intricacy of the materials used, the quality of the materials used and the variety as well. It's just simply amazing. And let's take a look at that head sculpt. Yeah, because we didn't get to see it properly when we were down on the table. Yeah, I'm going to go quiet for a second there. That is a phenomenal likeness of Tom Cruise. Absolutely phenomenal. I am preferring the sculpted hair. It's very well done, as you can see. Individual strands. Uh, I love how it meets the forehead there. It looks so natural. Yeah, the multiple paintworks, the skin texturing, the eyes, everything. Absolutely nailed it. I don't often give tens on figures, and I won't be giving a ten for this figure simply because it needed some instructions. Uh, I am stupid, and I need pointing in the right direction sometimes. Uh, had it come with instructions, um, yeah, uh, possibly that would have uh, raised the score. Uh, also as well, let, let's get down to the, uh, uh, the the elephant in the room and that's the shade of that armor. Yes, on checking, it's a little bit too dark. I would have preferred it slightly redder. So those two points, mark it down. So it's gonna get a nine from me. It was very, very close to a 10. Uh, had we had some instructions, 
Had that colour been slightly different on the armour, uh, it would have possibly been my first 10 score, but uh, as it stands at the moment, it's a nine. Yeah, but yeah, it speaks for itself. Yeah, simply stunning figure. Wonderful. So pleased to have it in the collection after all these years. Uh, I'm so glad I waited for this one. Uh, yeah, there it is. Nathan Algren from The Last Samurai. And an amazing piece it is too. So if you are gonna pick it up though, be very, very careful. Yeah, it, it, it needs some TLC and it needs to show, you need to show some restraint, I, I suspect, in posing this as well. But once again, that's all from me. Uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, hit the like button, hit the comment button, subscribe, hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. We've got bags of stuff coming up. The list is too long to mention. I think next up we've got a brand new uh, Commando, John Matrix, Hot Toys. Uh, that'll be interesting to see how Big Arnie stood the test of time. But from me, uh, Nathan Algren, The Last Samurai, uh, look after yourselves, take care, happy collecting, and see you next time.